All right, we're going to do a new lesson today on converting from a standard form equation to a vertex form equation. And the method we're going to learn is called completing the square. So it's a little bit tricky, but uh, once you get the hang of it, you'll, you'll see it's not too bad. Um, this is an example of what it looks like. So you can see we're going to switch from y x squared plus 10x minus 9. We're going to switch that to vertex form, which is x plus 5 squared minus 34. So we're going to use sort of a backwards foiling approach to get that. But before we do that, we're going to look at a method we've already learned. So in order to go from standard to vertex form, we have basically two options. We can do the completing the square, which we're going to learn in a minute, and or we could do it using the y-intercept and the vertex uh, p formula that we learned yesterday. So here's an example that we're going to take this standard form equation and we're going to switch it to that. We could graph both of those, and we'd see that the graphs are exactly the same. So we know that the two equations have to be equal, so what we want to do is be able to figure out how we can convert back and forth. So let's start with the, the method we already know. So and this will always work, it just takes you maybe a little bit longer to figure it out. So here's our equation, 2x squared plus 12x plus 8. We know from the equation a equals 2, so that means it's positive, it's going to open upwards, and we know that the c value, in this case the 8, is our y-intercept, so we know we have a coordinate at 0, 8. So all we have to do then is figure out our vertex. So using the formula p equals negative b over 2a, we plug our numbers in. So in our formula, b is 12, so that'd be negative 12. 2 times a of 2 gives you 4. Negative 12 over 4 gives us negative 3. So that means our vertex is at negative 3. All we need to do is figure out our q. So we can basically plug all of these bits of information into our equation. So our y-intercept would be our x and y coordinate. We have our a of 2. We know p is negative 3. So we basically have everything to solve except for q. So we just plug everything into our equation, put your 8 in for y, 2 in for a, 0 in for x, negative 3 in for p, and solve it for q. So we simplify all that, we end up getting a q of negative 10. So from there, we can basically write our vertex formula. So a of 2, p and q is negative 3 and 10, plug that in, and we're done. So the other option you could do, let me just quickly show you. We looked at this earlier. So you can either plug your p number into the vertex form like we just did, and we get the vertex equation automatically. Or the other option is we could put the p into the original, because p is our x-coordinate, so we can actually plug it into the original to figure out the y-coordinate. So whichever you prefer, it really doesn't make any difference. So we put a p in, so we have negative 3 squared plus 12 times negative 3 plus 8, and just type all that in on your calculator. So we get 2 times negative 3 would be 9, so 18 minus 36 plus 8. So that gives us 26 minus 36 would be negative 10. So in this case, if we do it this way, that gives us our Q value. So we know our P and Q is negative 3 and negative 10. And then from there, we can write our equation either way. So it doesn't matter which formula you substitute in. You just have to plug it into one or the other to solve for Q. So let's try a different one. Same equation, same type of thing, but let's try it a different way. So looking at this one, we know A is negative 3. We know our y-intercept is negative 16. So we have an x, y coordinate of 0, negative 16. We need to solve for p. So negative b over 2a, so that would be negative of negative 12. So that's positive 12 over 2 times negative 3. So 12 divided by negative 6 is negative 2. So we have our p value. So the only thing we got left is our q. So this time, let's just plug it into the original. We'll try it this way. So we'll go negative 3 times negative 2 squared, minus 12 times negative 2, minus 16. Type all that in your calculator, or you can do it in your head, whatever. We get negative 12 plus 24 minus 16, which would simplify to negative 4. So that's our Q value. I've, I've got it as Y here, but really what we're doing is we're figuring out what Y is going to be when P is negative 2. We know the vertex is going to happen when we get a Q. So the P and Q always go together. So that's it. We've got our, our key values. So our A is negative 3. Our P is negative 2. So that would be plus 2 in our formula. And our Q is negative 4. And that's our conversion. 
So it works pretty good. It takes a little bit of steps and a little bit of rearranging, but it does work quite well. So now what we're going to do is figure out how can we do this using completing the square. So it does the exact same thing, just a different way of, of writing it. So let's, let's learn this and we'll go through a few examples to see if you get the hang of it. So it's kind of completing the square is like backwards foiling. So let's first of all foil this. We know that these two equations I'm giving you, I'm telling you, are already the same. We could graph them again to double, double check, but let's try this. So if we actually foil this one out, we'd have x plus 4 times x plus 4 minus 1. So we would get x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16 minus 1. So that would give us x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 1, which would be 15. So you can see it actually is indeed the same equation. So what we're doing now is we basically want to do that process but in reverse. So what we have to do is look for patterns. We have to look for things that's, that's going on here. Um, on the title page, there's a different method that, uh, that people use to do foiling out. So let's just quickly look at that because that might help you understand what's going on here. So a lot of teachers teach it this way. They kind of use like a box. So we have x plus 4 on one side, x plus 4 on the other side. So you can see that's the same as what we're trying to foil out here. So if we go x times x, we get x squared. x times 4 is 4x. x times 4 again is 4x. 4 times 4 is 16. So that would be our, our simplified equation. We'd have x squared plus 8x plus 16. And then we just have this extra minus 1 on the outside. So that's how we would actually get that answer. So using the same logic, what we want to do is how would we kind of work backwards? Well, we know, we know that in our equation, we have x squared plus 8x. So in order to get a perfect square, right, we're changing that into x plus 4 squared. The only way we can get a perfect square is if that middle number was the same. So 4 times 4 gives us 16, and 4 plus 4 gives us the 8. So you can see the pattern is going to be we just have to take half of this number. So if you have x squared plus 8x, we want to break that into x plus 4 and x plus 4. Right, because that's the only way we'll get x squared plus 8x. So when we foil it out now, we have x times x, which is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. 4 times x is 4x. So that, that part there is exactly what we've got in our original, the x squared plus 8x. So we know our two factors then are x plus 4 and x plus 4, which is x plus 4 squared. So the only other trick is when we foil this out, this gives us 16. But we don't want 16, we want 15. So what we have to do is we actually have to counter that out. We want to basically say we're getting 16 in the equation, so we want to get rid of that 16. So what we need to do is we need to go minus 16 on, on, the, on the box. So when we foil that out, we automatically get 16. So we've got to get rid of that 16. So we have 15 minus 16. When we add those up, we get the minus 1. So the box method works pretty good. We'll do a couple more like this, but also, also kind of shorten it and show you where you don't actually need to write out the box. But it sometimes helps people. So let's try this. So we've got x squared plus 10x plus 16. So we know in order to get 10, we would have to have half of that. We have to have x plus 5 and x plus 5. So when we FOIL those, we get x squared, 5x, and 5x. So those, just those three gives us x squared plus, plus 10x. So that matches perfectly into our, our original question, but when we foil them out, we'd also get a 25. So we end up getting this, I like to call it a magic number, so we end up getting this 25 that shows up that we don't want. Okay, so we get this extra 25 in the equation. We want it to be, we want our final answer to be 16. So what we need to do is we actually have to subtract that 25 from whatever our extra number was. So 16 minus 25 would give us... Um, okay, Richard, please just letting the staff know that Power School is down right now. So if we do, do the 16 minus 25, that gives us uh, negative 9. So that's going to be sort of our extra number in our equation. So if we actually FOIL this out properly, we'd have um, 25 minus 9 would end up giving us the 16 that we need. So what you want to do then is you basically 
do half half of what you're starting with. So our final answer then should be x plus 5. And when we follow that out, we got 25. So we have to go minus 25 plus the 16 gives us negative 9. So that's our correct correct answer. So another way of writing this, and, and some people like to do different ways, so I'll show you this a little bit differently, how I would normally do this question. So let me just rewrite the original. So we have x squared plus 10x plus 16. So what we want to do is we want to break this in half. So always go half of the 10. So that'd be x plus 5. We know that's going to be a squared. So if we foil that out, we'd have x squared plus 5x plus 5x, which gives us the 10. But this will also give us plus 25. So we need to get rid of that 25. We don't want the 25. Plus 16 stays the same. So I like to say we have a magic number of 25. The 25 actually isn't in the question. It just comes out by when we do the foiling process. So then our final answer then would be x plus 5 squared minus 25 plus 16 is negative 9. And that would be our final converted formula. So once you get good at this, it's pretty quick to, to solve these. So let's do another one. So what happens when we get numbers that don't necessarily cut in half? So in this case, we know it's got to be x minus, but we get 9. So we still just cut in half. It'll be 4.5. So you'll get decimals, but it still works the same. So all we have to do is foil that out. So we get x squared minus 4.5x minus 4.5x, which gives us the minus 9. So we just need to figure out what the magic number is. So 4.5 times 4.5, they're both negative. So that'll give us plus 20.25. So we actually have to subtract 20.25 to cancel that out. And then our original question, our minus 20 stays the same. So our final answer for this one should be x minus 4.5 squared minus 40.25. So that looks kind of weird. So it's a good idea when you're doing these to actually graph these. So on your calculator, go to your, your graphing calculator. So if we graph this uh, without changing our window setting, we end up getting a graph that looks really far down. It goes really low, and so the graph's like way off your screen, but that's our graph. So what you can do is graph the original. So I put in the x squared minus 9x minus 20, so we get this graph something like that. And then on your calculator, also put in your final answer. So let's put in brackets x minus 4.5 squared minus 40.25. And we graph that one, and you'll see that the graph overlaps it exactly the same. So it goes right over top. So if that's indeed the case, then we know we've done it true. We've done it right. The, the two graphs have to be the same. So you can see the shortcut is take the middle number, cut it in half. That's your number that goes inside the brackets. Then we want to square that. So 4.5 times 4.5, square that. That'll give us our magic number that we need to get rid of. And then just combine that with the, the minus 20 that was there. Okay, let's look at a couple now where there's a number in front. So remember when we have general form or vertex form, that 3, that A value is the exact same. So what we have to do, we have to do a little bit of a math trick first. We have to take out that 3. So we want a common factor out that 3. So that would give us x squared minus 6x. We don't worry about the 20. We just want to worry about the front 2. So that's good. So we've got that taken care of. So now we can do just like we've, we just finished doing. So we want to change the x squared minus 6x. That'll change to x minus 3 squared. So the negative 3, negative 3 would combine to give you the negative 6. So now our magic number, we got to be careful. So if we were to foil this out, if we were to foil out x minus 3 squared, that'd be x minus 3 times x minus 3. So we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So you can see we have that extra 9 in there. So that ends up being our magic number. So we've got to get rid of the 9. But that 9 is also times by 3 in the equation. So we've got to be careful that 3 actually goes on both of those. So we end up getting... I'll just rewrite this a little bit simpler. So we end up getting 3 times x minus 3 squared. 3 times negative 9 is minus 27. Plus 20 is so our final answer then is minus 7. So once again, if you graph the original, graph your answer, they will be exactly the same. 
So the only other trick with this one is when you have that number in front, you got to factor it out first, then cut it in half, square it to get your magic number, but you got to remember to times it by that, that 3 out front, otherwise you get the wrong final answer for your Q. So let's try one more. So this one has a negative A value, but it works the same. So take out the negative 2, so that would give us x squared minus 5x. And the plus 7, that last number, you just leave it all the way to the end and worry about it later. So let's do another one. So we got minus 2, so half of that would be x minus 2.5. So we get a decimal again, but it'll still work. Now we got to figure out our magic number. So we'd have, we have 2.5 times 2.5 which will be negative 6.25, so that's what we're going to subtract. But remember that negative 6.25 also is affected by the 2. So our final answer then should be minus 2 times x minus 2.5 squared, negative 6.25 times negative 2 gives us plus 12.5, and then we have plus 7, so when we put all that together, our final answer is minus 2.5 squared plus 19.5. And that should be it.